Extra logic puzzles can be fun, and I hope you'll give these a try. I'm going to go through the first one with you, and then I want you to try the second one on your own. Um, you will get points just for effort. Okay, here's how it works. The numbers above the columns tell us how many blocks of color are together and then on each column. And then the numbers along the rows tell us the number of blocks of color along each row. So if there's two numbers, then there's at least one empty space between those number of blocks of color. It might make more sense if I just start working on it. It's easiest to start with biggest number numbers first because it's easier to figure out where to fill them in. Okay, let's go ahead and start with the eight in this second column. We have 10 blank spaces here and we're supposed to have eight filled in blocks of color. The thing is, we don't know if it's gonna be the top eight or if we're gonna skip one and then do eight or if we're going to skip two and do the bottom eight. But because eight is more than half of 10, more than five, in fact, we can go back and do this with any numbers that we have more color than five, we know that it has to at least reach three past the middle five or the top five, and it has to reach above three, at least three above for the bottom, five, bottom eight. So I've created this little square here that I'm going to fill in. You could just color them in. I'm going to just keep copying this and use it to fill in six spaces in the middle that I know will be filled in regardless of where that set of eight is going to be. Okay, I'm trying to not turn that. It's not cooperating. Maybe just filling them in myself, coloring them in would be easier. So right now I'm only going to put blocks of color in six, even though it says eight, because I don't know exactly where the eight are. I don't know if it's gonna be the top eight, the middle eight, or the bottom eight. But regardless of which set of eight it is, it's going to cover up these six spaces. Let's backtrack now to our columns and rows that say six. Since six is a little bit more than five, the six has to overlap past the middle. If it started here, it would end here. And if it start, it went clear to the bottom, it would end here. So we know that regardless of where that six is, these two spaces in the middle are going to have to be filled in. We just don't know for sure yet if it's gonna be the top six, the bottom six or somewhere in the middle. The next one, so let's just go ahead and do that with all of our sixes. So we can do that again for here. I'm gonna grab these two, control C, copy them together, grab them and put them over here. And then, oh, they can be a little bit more. And then for this six at the bottom and this six at the top, we're going to go horizontally instead. Kind of the same idea. Oops. So I want those in those middle two spaces because I know that it's going to have to overlap. At least those two, even if it was the first six or the last six or somewhere in the middle, those two spaces will definitely be colored. Okay, so then down here at the bottom, we can put two more here. Okay, now we can start looking at some other issues. I know we have other rows and columns with six, the number six in them, but they also have other things in them. Anytime you can actually put any sort of color in a first or last row or a first or last column, it helps. 
everything else. So let's start looking at what that has done so far because I have color in the middle of all four of my top and bottom rows and left and right columns. Um, I think the thing that comes to mind first is this row right here with the three and the one. Three one means we're going to have three blocks of color and then space and then one block of color. So only four blocks will be filled in and the rest will be empty. Now instead of just leaving blocks empty when I know they're going to be empty, I use a dot. So let me show you how I know that that blank spot right there is going to be blank. Right now we already have two blocks from this column and we already have six blocks from this column. And that's giving us two blocks of color and we're supposed to have three. There is no way for us to go further left. We can only go further right. So if I put a block right there, I now have my three blocks of color. And look over here at the end, I already have my one block of color. So this row is honestly finished. I can just go through and put dots. Probably should just do this with just a pen. That would be easier. Just grab my black pen. And I'm just going to put a dot in the middle of these boxes right here. That is telling me that those boxes are blank. That is not part of my picture. But the dot makes it so that they are mostly blank, so when we're done, we'll still be able to see the picture. With that, we are actually done with this row, so I'm going to put a check mark there because that row is finished. Now we can go to the next row, the six and the one. We already know we have our one finished here, and our six is going to be easily finished by just filling in to the right with six blocks across. Okay, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Going back to my pen, put in dots here, and this row is finished. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything else we can really do that with right now. I don't want my video to be super long, so I'm going to stop at this point, see if you've seen enough that you can start working this on your own, and I'll come back and do a second video in just a second.